You're watching Africa Speaks. Today is the 27th of June and in studio with me is a very inspiring young man. He's only 28 years old, 28 to be precise. And uh, he started as a hawker. That is the story that I know. But I would like to know more on where exactly that was that he started, where he was born and all that. So welcome with me, Silvanus Osoro, the Managing Director for Peach Face Marketing. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to the Africa Speaks show. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, as a hawker, you started as a hawker and now you're this big. Mm. Come on, how did that come to be? That looks like a well-cooked <laughs> story. Hawking is actually a, uh, the most recent story. Mm -hmm. But then um, I grew up, I was born and bred in uh, Kisi County mm -hmm. uh, some 27 years, 28 years ago mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't, I'm actually remembering that my birthday was last month, so. Oh, awesome. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And then um, I was born just like any other Kenyan. And uh, at age nine, I lost both of my parents. Oh, so sorry. Uh, within a span of like four months, mm -hmm. I lost both. So I came to Nairobi, I became a street boy. I you came to Nairobi at nine? No, initially I never came straight. Yeah. I went, I was brought by a relative. Around, when I was 10 years in class, four, four, three. Then I came to Nairobi. Then uh, the, that relative was arrested on some business deals. He was a very good uncle of mine. And was he, was he abusing you as a child? Was he making you do he, things you he, were not He was okay. He was actually yeah. a good guy. He was mm -hmm. a very good uncle. But then the unfortunate bit is that he got arrested on some business deals and got jailed for six years. So wow. here I am, and I'm not the only one. You know, we are six siblings. Every person grew in his weeks and uh, their own way, mm -hmm. all through. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that is my journey of struggle. So I could move from relative to relative. Uh, you know, other system mistreatment. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up to be in the street, Nairobi, for some time. And then uh, I remembered I had a relative. I used some funny means from Nairobi to Kericho. So you came from Nairobi back to Kericho? To Kericho, where I used to be told I had an uncle who used to live there. And I remembered some estate. So I got to Kericho through sleeping behind a, a matatu, ba, you know, a bus. Then we never had Muchuki rules. So we, you know, those kind of, uh, the seats arrangement was not like the current one. It was mm -hmm. a flat seat mm -hmm. w where one could sleep behind it, uh, beneath it. So I got to, uh, to Kericho and then I got my, I traced my way to my uncle. I finished class eight. I passed very well. I actually became number one in the whole district. Uh, but I was, uh, I was called in Capsabet Boys, and that is where the journey started. Completely, you know, life was becoming harder day by day. Relatives came again. Some pretended to help me. They took some money from. Were they uh, helping you because they finally realized you were the best student in Not really, not or? really. Some of them realized that uh, I was the beneficiary of some education cover my father had taken. And then they came and took all the amount, pretending to pay school fees, and they only paid first term. Oh no! So in the whole of uh, the whole of my high school life, I schooled four years in three different schools, and I don't have a former school because my former school, the very last school that I sat, my KCSE, yeah. is not there. It's not there anymore. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, it was a growing school, and uh, we were, I think, 21 in the whole school. So it was for compromise purposes. I was there to be helped by a friend of my late father, and, but I passed very well. I came to Nairobi, I started, uh, I, I was actually called to, I mean, I was given a letter from uh, UN to do education. Mm -hmm. I declined. Why did you decline? My passion wasn't there. What there was is your something passion? Called, initially my passion was to do accounts. But again, later I joined, I quit again, I did law, so I don't know, things <laughs> happen. <laughs> I know, yeah. But then, um, when I came to Nairobi, I wanted to start life. My hawking journey started when I, la I came to Nairobi the very first time again, I mean the second time after high school. Mm -hmm. In the period of high school, I became a plumber, I could quit school, do plumbing, quit school, do welding. I have done a lot of things in life at my age. I became a watchman, 
So I've actually done... So if you were quitting and going back to school, quitting and going back to school, how long were you in campus? No, no not campus. I'm talking that about the, the high school. still in high school? Yes. Okay. The high school life, I did more than 10 jobs. And all of them, I was actually looking for money, for my school fees. And I could pay for one term. I was only sitting, I only, every class, from one to from four, I did one term, one term, one term, one term. So which of the terms were you doing? Because you guys have three terms, right? The three high school? Terms? No, in high school, yes. 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 You have three terms. Yes. So were you sitting first term, second term, No, they were not regular. The third term? They were not regular. <laughs> they were quite irregular. That <laughs> this year I could, and any time I could go back to school, I could be given some paper, mm -hmm. more like an interview and uh, some questionnaires and I was passing because I was doing I was learning in a public institution mm -hmm. I mean public uh, university um, libraries right yes okay so I think when I came to Nairobi and started hawking I started first by selling newspapers the standard newspapers this was now when you're on campus yes okay no I hadn't even joined campus it was I, your vacation not really when I just came to Nairobi like mm -hmm. I was just a school leaver I started selling newspapers, being paid 100 shillings, this standard, per day. But then I think uh, the offices were long Jogorod. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> Go on. Then uh, that is what... I, I worked very hard. Besides that, we could make a commission of five shillings per newspaper. The paper was going for 35 shillings by then. So I made money along mm -hmm. Bunyala Road and uh, Mombasa Road. I made clients. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, you know, people don't realize. They think commission is very hard. Five shillings per paper. I could sell up to 1,000 papers in a day. Really? Yes. I'm quite sure to date my name is on record on Moy Avenue Circulation Office. That because, was quite some ambition. Yes. I looked for customers. I could sell to, I held my tattoos of uh, the Mbakasi route, you know, to my chest. And I was selling 1,000 newspapers. In a, in a day. So that is 5,000. Was sleeping at, uh, was uh, living at Mkuru Kwa Ruben slums. Mm -hmm. Even when I was making 5,000, I was still living in a house of 600 shillings. And uh, I saved money. Went to Stodmo, registered as a CPS student. And uh, I started again doing some business, like uh, selling clothes. You know, I sold clothes. I could buy lady clothes. Wake up very early in the morning, go to Gekomba. Yes. Buy dresses, very nice dresses at 40 shillings. Boreros, 20 shillings. Mm -hmm. uh, browses, you know, those ones. And then uh, I iron them, give them some perfumes, and sell to ladies and tell them they're from Turkey. Uh -huh. And then People you were selling them at how much? 600, wow. 500. And my target market was offices, office to office. Could do briefcase, put on a tie, dress very well. Could go to secretary, secretary, tell them, give me a deposit of 300 and pay the balance. So much. it actually works when you put on a suit and go and sell clothes, it works. It Image works is everything. Okay. Image is everything. The first impression that people see in you is what really matters. You cannot be saying you want to sell clothes and yourself, you're in funny clothes. So image, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, but then it wasn't also easy because uh, some people could go with our money. But still I was making profit. Can you imagine I've bought a cloth at, at 40, 40 shillings, shillings and you're paying a deposit of 300 shillings. So I'm making already 280 shillings, mm -hmm. 270 and shillings 70. or 260, 60. depending on the pricing. Mine was about moving volumes and I could wake up like any person very early in the morning. I started doing private studies on CPS and uh, that one I grew gradually got some company eventually uh, that was doing sales and marketing mm -hmm. I now learned some skills in that company I grew up gradually in that firm which then, is now uh, no not pitch face, pitch face? At some a different company right then I learned the skills from there and pitch face was born right from there so from the time Peach Face was born, mm. um, because I'm thinking we have very little time to talk about your entire yes. story. Yes. So from the time Peach Face was born, what was your strategy? Who were you targeting? What were you aiming at achieving? Mine was about transforming people positively and financially. And then money could come as, let's say, a byproduct or like an appreciative thing. And uh, 
we were targeting young people, mostly mm -hmm. Form Fours, and uh, any person who's also gone to college and done something. And uh, yeah, that was our target. But then we started doing sales of fast-moving consumer goods. Uh, we, uh, we partnered with local companies initially that wanted to push their products to the market. We started training young people. And then we now went international. We've, we have now partners from Malaysia, mm -hmm. partners from China. They give us products in a whole container. We push them. So what kind of products are you marketing at the moment? Are, are they uh, beauty products? Are they, uh, are they clothes? What exactly are you marketing? Beach Face Marketing is a marketing firm. And marketing is a wider term. Mm -hmm. There is experiential marketing. There is advertising in it. There is direct sales. So we deal with fast-moving consumer goods. However, we also do the marketing consultancy and adv outdoor advertising. And by fast moving, I mean anything that is movable. Anything that is movable. If you tell me to sell you a human being, I'll do that. You will sell yes. a human being? With the, I mean, if okay. it's legal. I, just I, I don't host human <laughs> traffickers on the show. <laughs> I know that. Just for the record. Yes, but I'm saying if any, anything that is movable, that is sellable, mm -hmm. and uh, it, that is legal, human trafficking is not legal. So. Okay, <laughs> I understand, yeah. Yes. So anything that is, uh, I mean, sellable, laptops, computers, um, phones, kitchen wares, we do that. And our strategy is very simple. We do door to door. So for us, it's about going to the end user. And we've actually implemented some marketing system that is very unique in this country, mm -hmm. and, uh, and even in the world, by extension. Uh, we call it the 508 marketing system. Tell very us unique. about it. Uh, one may not really understand until you come to the office and understand and see how the young people do. Mm -hmm. But then uh, we have funny terminologies that we use even internally. Like you'll hear like the one like JUIS. Yeah. JUIS stands for join us in creating employment. We've Oh. Ev every term has a meaning, every letter has a meaning. All right. Yes. Okay, just tell me something. Mm. You so far employ over 1,000 yes. people, mm. 1,000 young Kenyans. Mm. How exactly did you grow these numbers to 1,000? It started from me. Mm -hmm. I took myself as an employee and uh, I worked as an employee. Then I motivated another one. I started pulling one by one as the company. Agreed. Were you paying them on commission, paying them monthly? How exactly? We have that levels right? in the company. Mm -hmm. Uh, when one comes to work with us, you get trained for free on basically sales and marketing and advertising and anything. And then one works on targets, and that is basically commissions. Then you grow to another level, now where you'll be observed now to work as a trainer to the rest. You get extra money now on salary. So the more people you bring in, or is it the more money you don't you bring, bring in? any person. Yeah. You, one is not mandated to bring any person in the company because we do our own recruitment, mm -hmm. and uh, it's about the more sales you do. Yes, all that right. is on the first level. Okay, so you happen to empower all these young people. Mm. How do you sustain them? Because a lot of businesses have problems with sustaining numbers. How exactly do you sustain? As I said, we have a very uh, interesting marketing system, which has, a, has, has really employed a lot of discipline on it. Mm -hmm. We work on discipline. Our way of operations is more or less uh, more than military. But there's a high level of discipline. You'll even be shocked that we don't allow any person who drinks in our office. Mm -hmm. We even smell, even if you are doing it privately, because mostly we deal with young people between 18 and 35. Most of them come, will come to, we don't limit people past 35. Right. But what I'm saying is the most people work with us, or most people look for jobs are within that age bracket. So we've set a high standard of discipline. And uh, we've also made people to understand that this is a home. I've always told people that as a leader, you have to learn to apply the three Bs. One, one B stands for build. Always build your people. Mm -hmm. Work hard to build these people. Because they should not be working thinking they're working for you. They're also working within themselves to grow the organization as they grow. And then break. And then again build. And that I mean, one comes late, for instance, you don't just start shouting at the person and, you know, chasing the person. Start building, you know, you're smart, you know, looking good and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then, why are you late? Then you break the person. And then you're so like, yes, build, break, break and, and build, build again. And tell the person, you know, when you do this, 
it will mess you this way, this way. Making the person see that this is not about the company, it's not about me, it's about yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, being a leader, that uh, you don't tell people to dress official and you're casually dressed in the office. You don't tell people to come at six and you come at eight. That is being a boss. People will not have a person. They'll be working for the purposes of making money. Mm -hmm. And or maybe because you are there. The moment you'll be out, they'll not work. I open my office myself up to this level. All right. Somebody yes. told me that one of the key ways to be a successful person yes. is to wake up before everybody else. That is very the true. The early bird catches the worm. Some of them say they wake up at three, some four, you know, by six they're in office, by five they're in office, some even by four they're in office. But how much do you make, say, in a year? <laughs> in profits? In profit. Yeah. Let me say that, uh, one, I don't really think it's, uh, uh, one, one's wealth can be defined by the amount of money one makes. By but the amount of life, is defined oh, by the as a company, they make. Yeah. we make a positive of employing a thousand people, mm -hmm. and but the other year we also make a positive of employing. I 12. understand, but yeah. you can say roughly between a million. Our turnover, our turnover currently stands yeah. at, uh, uh, let me say, fifty million in a month. Wow. So we are talking about uh, six hundred of or something. Yeah, 600. that is a turnover. Wow. Yes. Okay. All right, interesting. Now, if you're watching us, we're speaking to Silvana Sosoro, a 28-year-old entrepreneur, the managing director for Pitch Face uh, Marketing. And just like you've heard his story, quite very inspirational. So there are a lot of young people out there who are looking for jobs. Do you have any more jobs to give them? Yes, we do. We give young people jobs. However, it's on application basis. We normally give them uh, the job, I mean, uh, the office numbers to call the secretaries and confirm. The requirements but then we are very specific on the kind of people we need we need people who are fluent in english right and uh form fours and above so even if you have your phd you have to start from somewhere because that is the art we always encourage people to learn to start small every manager that we have because actually our man there is no manager in pitch face who earns less than 150,000 in a month and some of them are 22 some of them 23. right 21. So one must be able to accept to start small. If one cannot start small, then I don't think it faces them. Yes, because we have our own training. Great. And then uh, we also encourage people to live on the three Ps. Patience, perseverance, and persistence. I mean, you don't just come, the company has grown, and you just want to be there. Uh, simply because probably you have your degree in some, you know, you have to start somewhere. <laughs> Interesting. All right. I think that is uh, more motivating when you say that th some of these young people are as young as 22 years old. Um, tell me, what are uh, some of the gaps that you have in your company that a lot of Kenyans who are watching right now can be able to fill up? Um, let me say that we are never enough. The marketing field is so wide because engineers have made products, but they need them to be pushed to the market. All right, I understand, so but I'm sure you have uh, a few vacancies that you're looking at right now yes. and that you want to be filled. Which are some of those? We need more marketers in the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, any person willing can probably give them the number. Yes, uh, how do they get in touch with you? You connect, you give a call to uh, the office line mm -hmm. or my secretary's number, and I think that is more prudent on this uh, show. One can call uh, 07. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I should say it. Yeah, go ahead. 0706-352-155. Okay. On a weekday, mm -hmm. strictly on a weekday. All right, that's between and, Monday and Friday. Uh, Monday and Friday, and between 8 and 5. And then they, for more information, probably one can also like our Facebook page, mm -hmm. Pitch Face Marketing, right. and ask queries there, one uh, can be answered. Great. That's very inspiring. And I'm sure you've all been inspired in one way or another. And uh, he's only 28. I'm sure you can do what he's doing or even do it better. But build, break, build again and patience perseverance persistence those are some of the key issues that he's talking about now you're young yeah a lot of people even in, including the ones you're seeing around here very young as well why don't you speak to all the kenyans out there who'd like to be like you 
like to go from where you've come from and some of them even share your story you know they started as hawkers and then have now grown into uh, these big people but speak to those of them who would like to be exactly like you are uh, the camera is right there um i could say this that um, this mentality that we are having as young people that we think probably that you must have somebody to go somewhere mine is about I mean, we'll only tell people to change their attitude. I've always told people that when Mzungu came to Kenya, he colonized us physically. Then we chased him, and he said he's going to colonize us mentally. Brought up an education system that made us believe that you only go to school to get a good job. And most people have never believed that you can go to school, study, and create jobs. So if you don't make a million shillings in a month, I mean, in a day, you don't make one million shillings on net, minus all the expenses, then you have nothing to do in bed past 4 a.m. These blame games of telling people that, you know, uh, it is because of this and this and this will not help. Start small, be patient, stop quitting this job, going to this job, going to this job. You have to make yourself. Look for your passion and start with it. Start that particular thing, small. It's not about capital of, you know, uh, uh, money not cash capital, it should be brain capital. What do you have at hand? And any person can support you. So do something, start small, and go somewhere. Change your attitude towards the way you look at life, and then you'll succeed. Right, and just like they say, attitude sometimes will determine your altitude. Let me read some of these uh, responses coming through a, a hashtag Africa Speaks. Joki Mburu is saying, this guy's determination, he used to buy clothes for 40 bob, and sell them in offices at 600. He's let the cat out of the bag. There we go. And David Fred Leo, Leo is saying, I know Silvana Sosoro from way back in 2009 when working for Places and Faces, he's truly inspiring. And also um, Mwinzi Joseph is saying, image is everything. This man, Silvana Sosoro, is such an inspiration. Well, there's a lot of uh, tweets that are coming through, but I cannot go through all of them. We've come to the end of the show. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. And before we actually wind up, we always do play videos from across Africa. And Tanzania is soon heading for elections. So we just thought to play something, you know, laid back from Tanzania. This one is coming in from Professor Jay. The conversation continues online. God bless you all.